Good day, Grade Dwarfs. Welcome to this third lesson in Week 22, and we are continuing looking at electrodynamics. In this lesson, we're going to be learning about what is the heart of the whole electrodynamics section, which is electromagnetic induction. It's a very, very important section. So grade 12, please pay close attention to this next slide where it has a video that has again been produced by the excellent team at Mindset Learn or Learn Mindset. Have a great day. So far. We have seen the magnetic field being made by conductors and how we can use this magnetism to create motion. The goal of this lesson is to look at electromagnetic induction. The idea is that if I can turn electricity into magnetism and movement, I can also turn movement and magnetism into electricity. This is absolutely possible. In fact, this is the way that most of the electricity in the world is made simply by the movement of coils of wire and magnets. Okay, so how does this happen? Well, luckily the equipment to make electricity is the same as the equipment I used to make movement. I will need a coil of wire and a magnet. The difference is that now I supply the movement and what comes out is electrical current in these two wires. Let's go and see a simple experiment. When I move a magnet into this coil, I expect that electromagnetic induction will happen in the wires of this coil. To see the small voltage produced, I use a galvanometer. Okay, so let's slide the north pole into the coil and see what happens. The needle of the galvanometer moves. We've made electricity. When I pull the north pole out, the needle moves the other way. Did you notice anything else while we were doing that experiment? While the magnet was still inside the coil, there was no voltage induced. That means that it is not magnetism that makes the electricity, it is changes in the magnetism that brings about electricity. You may have noticed that the direction of the current changed when the movement changed. Let's look at a short animation using an online tool. When the magnet changes the magnetic field, a voltage is produced. But when it doesn't, no voltage is produced. How can we predict the direction of the current flow? We can use Lenz's law. Lenz's law. When the magnetic flux in a coil is changed, a current will be induced in the coil to oppose the change in the magnetic flux. In other words, the coil will produce the opposite change when I move the magnet. For instance, if I try to move the north pole closer, the coil will induce a current such that an opposing north pole is induced on the same side. B is the symbol for the magnetic field. If you use your right hand solenoid rule, you can actually see the direction of the current to achieve this by the way your fingers wrap around. Can you think why the current would swap direction if we were to pull back on the magnet? That's right. The opposite change in magnetism means the opposite induced current. It may actually be easier to say that the coil will induce a north or south pole to oppose the motion. This means that if we oppose a south pole which approaches, a south pole is induced to repel it. Remember that your thumb points in the direction of north when using the right hand rule for solenoids. So, when you change the magnetic field, we can also induce current. But remember from grade 10, current does not flow without energy from EMF. Michael Faraday studied the relationship between electricity and magnetism in depth. His work led to an equation to describe the relationship between induced EMF and magnetism. This equation is called Faraday's Law of Induction. Written in words, it says that the EMF, represented by the Greek letter epsilon, of a solenoid is equal to the number of turns multiplied by the rate of change of magnetic flux. Wow, 
That looks complex, but it's really not. It describes why we observed some of the events earlier in our lesson. Immediately, this explains why there is no voltage produced when the magnet lies still inside the coil. There is no change in flux, and therefore, no EMF is induced. What about the other parts of the equation? Can we use them to make a bigger EMF? Let's go back to our experiment and change the number of turns. I can see from the equation that the EMF is directly proportional to the number of turns. So, if we increase the number of turns, we should induce more voltage. When I use a solenoid with more coils, I should get more EMF. Let's compare the two. First, I insert the bar magnet into the first coil and I see that voltage is produced. Now, let's try the second coil with many more turns. Wow, look at that. Our hypothesis was correct. More turns produced more voltage. Faraday's law also has another part that deals with the magnetic flux strength and how quickly it changes. It says that the larger the change in magnetic flux, the more EMF I should expect. We can do this either by making the area of the coil larger or by using a stronger magnet. It is much easier to use a stronger magnet, so we will do that. I will compare the EMF induced from the weaker magnet to the EMF produced by this very strong magnet. First, let's insert the weaker magnet from earlier into the coil. Notice the voltage. Now, let's use the new, stronger magnet. Wow, that made a big difference. We've seen that a stronger magnet and more coils can improve the EMF produced in a coil. What about the time? The last piece of Faraday's law says that the EMF is inversely proportional to time. That means that the quicker we move the magnet, the shorter the time and therefore a greater EMF. Let's see if moving the same magnet slowly then quickly will change the EMF. Once again, I insert the original ball magnet slowly and note how low the EMF induced is. Let us do the same thing, only this time we will move the magnet faster. So when I push the magnet in quickly and remove it quickly, notice how the time is shorter and the EMF is higher. We've now seen that three things can affect the induced voltage in a solenoid. The number of coils, the strength of the magnet, and lastly, the time taken while we change the flux. Well, this is all good to know if we'd like to make electricity, but I'm sure you'll agree that this is a difficult way to make electricity. If we rotate a magnet near a coil, we can produce a constantly changing field. This allows us to make electricity much more easily without sliding a bar magnet.